We're going to solve for the x-intercepts of these quadratic functions by setting them equal to 0 and solving it by either factoring if it's factorable, such as number 34, and if it's not factorable, we'll either complete the square or use the quadratic formula. I'll give you an example of each. So let's do number 32. This is not factorable. Once we set it equal to 0, we're going to complete the square. So let's first divide both sides by a so that a is 1. So we get x squared plus 2x minus 3 over 2 is equal to 0. Next, we add c to both sides. So in other words, we're putting c on the other side. Then we take our b, which is 2, divided by 2. That gives us 1, and we square it. So that's still 1. We add that to both sides. Next, we factor this perfect square trinomial. It gets factored into x plus 1 quantity squared. 3 over 2 plus 1 is 5 over 2. Then we take the square root of both sides. Remember, when we take an even root, we're going to put plus or minus on one side. Now these two cancel. So we get x plus 1 equals plus or minus. Let's rationalize this by multiplying top and bottom by radical 2. So we get radical 10 over 2. Now we're going to subtract 1 from both sides, so x equals negative 1 plus or minus radical 10 over 2. Get a common denominator. This becomes negative 2 over 2, so the answer is negative 2 plus or minus radical 10 all over 2. So these are our two x-intercepts, negative 2 plus radical 10 all over 2, and negative 2 minus radical 10 all over 2. Let me show you this on the calculator. We're going to graph the function, press y equals, and put negative 2 x squared minus 4x plus 3, and press graph. These are our two x-intercepts here and here. This number is our negative 2 plus radical 10 over 2. And this x-intercept is negative 2 minus radical 10 over 2. If you press trace, now the calculator is expecting an x value. Put parentheses. We're going to put the numerator, negative 2 plus radical 10. Close the parentheses for the radical, then close the parentheses for the numerator, divided by 2. This is the x value. When you hit return, it gives you the y value, and the y value is in fact 0. So that is one of our x-intercept, definition of x-intercept, the, where the graph of the function has a y value of 0. If you put in the other x-intercept, so open parentheses, negative 2 minus radical 10, close the parentheses for the radical, then for the numerator, divided by 2. That's your other x-intercept, so that also has a y value of 0. Okay, And you can see the vertex and the fact that it's an upside-down parabola and all of that. So I just wanted us to be able to visualize what it means as far as x-intercept. Okay, now let's do number 33. We'll do that one by using the quadratic formula. Let's identify A, B, and C. It's a good habit to get into, so we won't make a mistake when, complete, when uh, solving. 
x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. It's good to memorize it with that song, that music. Okay, so negative of b, the opposite of b, that means it's now going to be positive 2 plus or minus square root of b squared, that's negative 2 squared. That means if you use your calculator, say if this is a big number and you don't know the answer is positive 4, make sure to put, let's show you, on the calculator, see, you have to put it in parentheses when you square it. Otherwise, if you don't, calculator knows order of operations, it would square the 2 first, then multiply it by negative 1, and that will give us negative 4, which is not what we want, so beware of that. That's a common mistake. Minus 4, a is negative 1, c is 4, all over 2 times negative 1. So we get 2 plus or minus 4. Now here multiply the signs first. Negative times negative is positive. 4 times 4 is 16, all over negative 2. So we get 2 plus or minus square root of 20 all over negative 2. We're going to simplify radical 20. That's radical 4 times radical 5. Radical 4 comes out as 2. So that's 2 plus or minus 2 radical 5 over 2. We're simplifying it all over negative 2. So now, because this, every one of these terms is divisible by 2, we're going to simplify. We're going to reduce. So we get 1 plus or minus radical 5 all over negative 1. What we're going to do is we're going to distribute this negative to everything on the top. So negative goes to here, and it becomes negative. This negative distributed to this plus or minus changes both of these signs, so it becomes plus or minus again, or minus or and plus, but we usually write it as plus or minus. So these are our two x-intercepts. You could verify with the calculator. Number 34, we set it equal to 0. This is factorable, so it's quite easy. So our two x-intercepts are at 3 and 1. Let's talk about this for a minute. Let's graph. We have an x-intercept at 1 and an x-intercept at 3. So we know our vertex will be the midpoint of our two x-intercepts. That's the way it always works out with parabolas if we have two real x-intercepts. Okay, so the midpoint of 3 and 1 is 3 plus 1 over 2, which is 2. So the vertex is at 2. To find the y value of the vertex, you plug in 2. So you get 2. So this was the x value. So you plug in. We're finding f of 2. So that's 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 3. So that's 7 minus 8, which is negative 1. So 2, negative 1 is the vertex. So this is what the parabola looks like roughly.